Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Shomo's Biology. In this video lecture, we are going to talk about aminoglycosides. Aminoglycoside type of antibiotics, uh, the example of aminoglycosides, the types, uh, their use and uh, the different side effects of aminoglycoside antibiotics and the examples of aminoglycoside antibiotics. So without any further delay, let's move on to start talking about the general properties of aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides are class of broad spectrum antibiotic and broad spectrum means basically they are targeting both gram positive as well as gram negative bacteria. Mostly they are used for the aerobic gram negative bacteria treatment, particularly against the aerobic gram negative bacilli infections. They are also effective against other bacteria including Staphylococcus and Mycobacterium tuberculosis. They are particularly active against aerobic gram negative bacteria which I already mentioned. So that is something uh, for USP for aminoglycosides and they act synergistically against certain gram positive organisms. Okay, so that's uh, how they work. Some more properties that they are, they are, they can be both natural as well as semi synthetic in nature. Uh, they are effective against gram negative bacteria. First member discovered like streptomycin in 1944 they produced by soil actinomycetes okay these are some important properties regarding their development and they are active against tuberculosis bacilli classification of aminoglycosides it can be divided into two different one is the systemic aminoglycosides and the other one will be tropical so for systemic type we have streptomycin amikacin gentamicin sisomycin canamycin tobramycin all this is these are some very common type and the tropical example are neomycin and phremycety. Okay, these are the two types. Particular neomycin is used for the skin infections for tropical use. What is the mechanism of action for aminoglycosides? Okay, so basically in very simple terms, we can say it's a protein synthesis, protein synthesis inhibitor. And in protein synthesis inhibitor, for the inhibition of protein synthesis in bacteria, of course, uh, there are two different subunits of ribosome, 50S and 30S subunit. So, what kind of inhibitor this is? Okay. Normally, what happens, you can see that 5 prime to 3 prime, this is the mRNA that is present and ribosome is sitting there. 50S unit, this is the 50S unit and this is the 30S unit in green. Direction of movement is 5 prime to 3 prime. And uh, we can see normal protein synthesis is done. Mature protein can be made like that. But what happens is that if the aminoglycoside antibiotic is present, any of this type of aminoglycoside antibiotic is present, then it can do three different effects. A, B, and C, three different effects we are talking about. First of all, it can block the initiation of protein synthesis. Okay, so very first phase is the blocking of initiation of protein synthesis. The second one it blocks further translation and elicits premature termination. Okay, and the third one incorporation of incorrect amino acids. It allows the misreading of mRNA by the ribosome to add incorporation of incorrect amino acid, which will ultimately lead to the formation of truncated proteins. So all these three features are done and they can ultimately prevent the protein synthesis process in bacteria, thus killing the bacteria. Because if the required protein is not made, then obviously the bacteria will not survive. Okay, so that is the idea here. So basically, they will interact to the 30th subunit. You can clearly see that the binding of uh, the binding here is the for the amino glycosides in the 30th subunit, and what they cause is blockage of the initiation of protein synthesis and also misreading the codon so that uh, truncated peptide can be produced. Okay, so this red colored dot is denoted here with the amino glycoside. All right. In this segment of the animated video, we are going to see another 30th inhibitor, amino glycosides. So mechanism of action of aminoglycosides as a 30S ribosomal subunit inhibitor. We know that for the protein synthesis in prokaryotes, we need an mRNA with codons represented with light blue, dark blue and orange color. We also have 30S ribosomal subunit and 50S ribosomal subunit both with E site, P site and A site. And we also have the growing chain of polypeptide denoted here with this all blue dots connected together as a peptide bond and tRNA that is sitting in the P site. So the tRNA in the P site is with the polypeptide chain at a growing phase of protein synthesis and we need tRNA which will bring new amino acid to the A site we call it charged tRNA or amino acyl tRNA which gets charged so this amino acyl tRNA will bring this amino acid to the A site and then the peptidyl transfer activity will be done the polypeptide chain will be transferred from the tRNA of the P site to the tRNA of the A site 
okay polypeptide bond formation will be there as a result of which this process is known as the translocation of uh, or elongation phase and basically translocation means how the ribosome moves one codon unit forward from 5 prime to 3 prime direction so as a result protein synthesis process is complete uh, or completed like progress like that now what happens when there is a presence of aminoglycosides? So what aminoglycosides do? Aminoglycosides once present, they will bring itself to the 30th subunit, associate with 30th subunit. And what it does, it causes the misreading of the upcoming codon. In this case, the codon is the codon of the A site. So this codon will be misread by the tRNA. So tRNA will bring an amino acid which it should not supposed to bring. A wrong or erroneous nucleo, erroneous amino acid. The tRNA will bring an amino acid which is not good because it misread the codon due to the presence of amino glycoside this amino acid is not good and as a result of which what happened the wrong amino acid due to the codon misreading that terminates the process and even if this amino acid gets incorporated to the polypeptide chain that polypeptide chain is not going to produce the protein that the bacteria need to survive so as a result eventually the bacteria will die and the rest of the components will be dissociated so this is the process of amino glycosides mechanism of action as a 30th subunit inhibitor what are the clinical uses of aminoglycosides? They are used in respiratory infections, subacute bacterial endocarditis, particularly the respiratory infection because we know that they are very active against the tuberculous bacilli, right? Plague, they can be used in plague. They have been used in plague. Meningitis, they can use in meningitis, particularly the gentamicin used in meningitis. In urinary tract infection, we can use aminoglycoside antibiotics. In osteomyelitis, we can use aminoglycoside antibiotics. In lung abscess, we can use aminoglycoside antibiotics. And septic caused by the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. This is something really dangerous. This is where we can also use aminoglycoside. And finally, in tuberculosis, we usually use aminoglycoside antibiotics because it's very effective against this aerobic bacilli, particularly the streptomycin, canamycin and amikacin variant of the aminoglycoside antibiotics can be used against tuberculosis, subacute bacterial endocarditis and all the different kinds of respiratory tract infections. So what are the side effects of aminoglycoside antibiotics? First of all, uh, there are two kinds of side effects here, which is nephrotoxicity and autotoxicity. So basically it is toxic to your nephron and also toxic to your visual impairment. So anything related to the visual uh, an auditory function can something related to uh, damage can be caused by the aminoglycoside but the nephrotoxicity is least for this aminoglycoside not accumulating the renal cortex particularly but apart from that it causes disturbance in vestibular functions it can cause vertigo can cause disturbance in auditory function which is also less common but yeah autotoxicity is there can cause fever rash and allergies uh, that is very common for most of the antibiotics there is always related to hypersensitivity reactions that's common and can cause deafness in newborn this is something that is related to the autotoxicity so basically nephrotoxicity and autotoxicity are the two kinds of negative impact or side effects of aminoglycoside antibiotics which can be managed uh, if we use it in a proper dosage okay the nephrotoxicity is least but the autotoxicity is always there so that's all about aminoglycoside antibiotics if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to know more about different antibiotics their functions their mechanism of action and classification thank you bye